Welcome to the lovely islands of Battlefield 4. Man, the weather is B E A beautiful. Oh my god, what the what just happened? It was so lovely, it was sunny. Ah, global warming. Thanks, Obama. Battlefield 4, PlayStation 4, coincidence? I don't think so. Welcome everyone to Battlefield 4 with Laundry! Probably wondering why is it called Battlefield 4 with uh, Laundry? Well, plain and simple. I have a story while well, you're going to be watching a gameplay about Laundry. I'll get to that later. I just want to make a couple introductions first about uh, why I am decided to record um, and put this video up on YouTube. So, my name is David, also known as Sniped You Ha Ha. That is my name on the PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4. So, add me up if you want. Also, if you're in the mood, you can hit that like button, possibly hit that subscribe button, and even if you want, you can comment on this video. Um, and you know what? You can even hit the dislike button because you know what? There is no such thing as bad publicity. Unless you're Donald Trump, where everything comes out of your mouth is completely sh. So if you guys are going through my YouTube channel and seeing all these live action um, videos and going like, Yo man, where are the uh, games at? Well, I'll tell you. Uh, they're all on my PS4. I have them recorded. I just need to get them up onto YouTube and then off of YouTube to edit them and then back onto YouTube. Uh, I have a ton of uh, Battlefield 4. I have a bit of Star Wars Battlefront. Pretty good footage in there. And I have a lot of really in intense, and I'm talking intense, moments in uh, WWE 2K16 online. So, they will be up soon. Uh, when? I don't know, but they will be up soon. So, you know that saying, when you go black, you never go back? Yeah, that's me. For this game, uh, versus uh, Call of Duty, because look at the graphics in this game. It is just unbelievable. I mean, I just want to kiss every single developer who made Battlefield possible because the graphics in this game are just amazing. It might not look as good um, as you're seeing it right now, but actually when you have it up on a TV, it looks friggin' fantastic. Now, you all uh, have the right uh, to say, oh no, Call of Duty's better, um, and that's fine, but you know what, you are all wrong, because <laughs> I'm telling you, um, Battlefield 4 is just the greatest, because A, we have teamwork. In um, Call of Duty, it's just point and shoot, point and shoot, point and shoot, but this... Battlefield 4, oh my god, the amount of teamwork you have. I'm playing as a sniper right now. Snipers, are, or actually they're called recons. Are we supposed to um, pinpoint people out on the map? So you see that boat? See that little red thingy above uh, above him? Uh, I can point him out, and everyone else on my, ma on my uh, team can see him on the map. Uh, medics, if you're down, like if you're killed by an enemy, a medic can uh, revive you. There's none of that in Call of Duty. I love Battlefield. I do kind of take that back because I, well, my internet here just decided to like take a break on me for a second. It was very choppy. Anyway, I do kind of take that back. Um, I do not like um, Call of Duty Black Ops 3 because everything is so colorful and it's like no, and it's all futuristic, and it's like, no, you know, uh, you, you make a war game, you gotta make it authentic, you gotta make it realistic, like this, that's why I absolutely loved uh, Call of Duty World at War, because it brought us back into World War II, it brought us uh, into everything that they had to go through, which is just, just terrible, but, um, just the storyline, the graphics for that were amazing, and it was all real. And if you all look at your screen exactly right there, uh, that is the example that I'm giving you. Because, look, he's not dead. He's in my crosshairs. He isn't dead. Why? Because Battlefield, that's why. If I were playing uh, Call of Duty, and it was in the exact same situation, a guy was moving across the map, and he was in my crosshairs, and I fired, he'd be dead. But, since I'm playing Battlefield, that does not happen because uh, the, uh, a really cool thing that they have here is bullet drop, or, yeah, is a bullet drop for snipers, so you actually need to determine how high above the head you need to aim, uh, or above whatever body part you're trying to shoot at, because if you don't, then you won't hit your target. Battlefield! 
But I mean, like, totally, uh, feel free to uh, comment on what one you like better, uh, Battlefield 4 or Black Ops 3 or any of the Call of Duties. Um, yeah, if you want to uh, talk about it, let me know. So just the other day, I went to go see Quentin Tarantino's new movie, which is called The Hateful Eight, and I can tell you, it is a glorious piece of work. Um, but you're probably wondering, I thought this was called Battlefield 4 with Laundry, not Battlefield 4 with The Hateful Eight. Well, I'm going to um, be telling you guys a whole bunch of different stories, but the main story is going to be about Laundry, but I'm going to tell you all these different ones because I still have a lot of time in this video. Anyway, back to The Hateful Eight. Uh, don't worry, I won't give you any spoilers. I won't tell you uh, that Samuel L. Jackson's character is a complete badass. I won't tell you that absolutely no character in that movie dies. They all live, they all go out and have a party. Don't worry, I won't tell you all that. It's okay. Oh. Shit. So, what about the Blue Jays, huh? I just want to know what your favorite uh, Tarantino movie is, because he's my all-time favorite director. Uh, and if he's not your favorite director, or if you hate all of his movies, uh, what is your favorite director? What's your favorite kind of genre and movie? Uh, I just kind of want to know that stuff about you guys. Um, and so my all-time favorite Tarantino movie is The Hateful Eight. Glorious. Saving Private Ryan. I feel like I'm in Saving Private Ryan right now because all these guys are getting sniped. For, for those of you who haven't seen Saving Private Ryan, stop this video, go see it, and come back and you will understand. Basically what happens is there's a guy in a church tower and he snipes a whole bunch of people. That's what I feel like I'm right now. I am that guy in a church tower sniping all these noobs. Sniping, that's all I really do in these games. In Call of Duty, that's all I did. I got my uh, sniper, whatever sniper it was, in World at War. It was the uh, Springfield lovely sniper. Uh, in, in Black Ops 1 and 2, it was like the LL1H or whatever, or LL19 or something like that. And in this, it's whatever sniper I have now. I don't currently know the name of it because I don't know it. It's L something something something. And so that's all I do. Uh, I snipe. That, that's my gamer take. Snipe you, haha, because when I snipe you, I laugh. Um, <laughs> that's a great way to start this is, um, <laughs> anyway, um, a thing that y you're going to see up here is some hit markers. Every game has them, snipers have them in any game. Um, but a thing that really, really sucks is when you snipe someone, you get a hit marker and they kill you and you can see how much health they have left. There was one guy at the beginning or something like that, I uh, got him, but it was a hit marker and he had like 9 or maybe even 2% health left. And man, that really pisses me off because I'm like, oh, if I were only like a little teeny tiny centimeter or inchy higher or lower, he would have been done. I would have gotten that kill. He would have been done. That's my little rant about uh, sniping. But I still love it, so haha, -ha, for all of for those of you who I kill. Huh. And sometimes when I snipe, I'm just like, why am I doing this? Just like that guy there. I shot him once, and I totally missed. And then I shot him again, I got a hit marker, and then I decided to go uh, James Bond on his ass. So I took out my pistol, and boom, he's dead. But man, I just got one question for you all. Where the hell did the sun go? I mean, I know it's right there. But, I mean, it was so lovely. It was, like amazing outside it was warm i could drink some cocktails outside but now it's really kind of like crappy and rainy jeez man uh, these game developers just really want to mess with you like it's like i'm playing two different maps entirely oh my god got that oh i got shotgun mm -hmm. all right let's spawn on this guy let's see what we got oh my <laughs> Well, that escalated quickly. You know what? I'm not even mad. I mean, like, I just came from a death and he got me right when I spawned. I mean, you know, that's pretty good. I'm not mad. I'm a little irritated, but I'm not mad. That was pretty good, you know? Uh, props to you, my friend. Now, a thing that I like to do when I snipe is I try and uh, snipe the pilots out of helicopters or jets or whatever. But I haven't been able to do that yet. It's been so hard. It's just ridiculous ridiculously hard you have no idea unless you've done it it's easy or you've done it and you understand what I'm talking about but when I do um, when I do really cool snipes or uh, unexpected snipes to myself I like to jump up in the air a lot and I do that coming up I'm pretty sure or I did that earlier in a video but that's just a way for me to tell you guys uh, visually that I have done something amazing 
Um, but when I do, I will post it and we'll do lots of ch Oh, yeah, or, yeah, right there. That's what I'm talking about. Got the guy with the grenade. I had no idea. Uh, showed up on the, on the uh, kill feed and I jumped up in the air. That was really cool. Alright, so I just go up here, kind of see what's going on, because at this time of the game, like, everything's going on. And I see a, a little boat, and I'm like, okay, let, let's do this. I snipe, I miss, and eh, I snipe, I get him! See, I jump up in the air, and I actually, I accidentally jump off the entire thing. But that is how excited I get when I do an unexpected kill. I jump off of the building that I am currently on. Uh, I have a lot of fun. I have no life. I just missed that guy. I'm like, no son, you're going down. So I see this other guy. Um, I see another guy. And you see that little red triangle there? That is what spotting does. Um, I spot that guy. I don't kill him, but I still get a spotting bonus because I spotted him out to my teammates. Now, anyone can do this. On the PS4, I believe it's the right trigger button. Anyone can spot to get an extra little bonus. It helps everyone on your team. But um, that's the main focus on recons. They need to spot aircraft. They need to spot people. Uh, you can do it for an easy bonus. Now that is a pro tip from Sniped You. Ah, ah. Pro tip. <laughs> so right here I'm just like, man, what the hell is going on? There's like all the walls around me are just exploding. So I'm like, all right, I got to get, I got to get up high. Cause that's just intense. I'm still getting shot at. I'm like, from where? I have no idea. But it's this stupid helicopter that got me. But I'm telling you, wasn't that insane? That's why I love Battlefield 4. There's nothing like that in, in um, Call of Duty. Uh-uh. <laughs> and I want to know what that was. I was like, I'm someone like dying, but they're being muffled. Uh, I have no idea what that was. I would love to know what that was because that actually was really funny. Uh, so here I am. Uh, I get respawned back to where I basically died, where all the walls were just exploding and everyone was shooting. Uh, so here I'm trying to walk forward and I realize I'm stuck in between uh, the wall and just a little walkway. <laughs> Stupid. Just thought you should know what the struggle was there. The struggle was real, my friends. See, I see another thing I don't like about this game, or about any uh, shooting game, is when you are focused on someone, someone can just come right on beside you and kill you. It just angers me so much. Okay, folks, time for a very fun, but extremely sad, well, for it's not a fun fact, it's a very sad fact for me, I'm sure a sad fact for a lot of people out there, that from February onward, uh, Netflix knifed! Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that um, Netflix from February onward will no longer be streaming Doctor Who. Now, when I heard that, I'm like, no, now I actually have to go out and talk to people. I need to have a social life, but no. I was so upset when I heard that because two years ago, I was firstly introduced to Doctor Who by my roommate, and I think I stayed in my bed for, I don't know, three, four days watching all of the Doctor Who, starting from Christopher... Christopher Eccleston all the way to Matt Smith and I love each and every single episode and the Christmas episodes let's not even get started on those I cry like a baby honestly for those of you who have seen me watching Doctor Who and especially the Christmas episodes I tend to get a little uh, <laughs> I tend to get a little teary eyed because it's so emotional and this past Christmas episode uh, which aired in December, it was so emotional for me, and I'm sure it was so emotional for a lot of other people because it wrapped up a character that was with us um, all the way back uh, with David Tennant, which was many, many moons ago. And when when I heard that Doctor Who was in, uh, wouldn't be streaming anymore, I got very emotional, and it's really going to suck, so I really don't know what to do with myself anymore. Uh, I need my doctor appointments on Saturdays, but they will no longer be there until 2017. I don't know what to do. I need help. Uh, you can comment actually on what your favorite uh, Doctor Who episode is, what your least favorite Doctor Who episode is, who your favorite uh, Doctor is, who your least favorite Doctor is, if you're a fan of the classic Doctor Whos, which I actually am very quite so a fan of the classics. Um, this, uh, let me know what you think of the Christmas specials. Uh, let me know if you're even a fan, because um, I love Doctor Who. If you're not, you can I can't actually talk to you anymore. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. I will talk to you.
but not as much as the Whovians. <coughs> I'm kidding, so uh, let me know if this interests you at all. Let me know, if not, oh, uh, surprise, motherfucker. I got extremely surprised by that shank. Those of you who are actually still here watching this video, hold out your hand. Mm, I just gave you a high five. You guys are all fantastic people. You guys are amazing human beings. Because guess what? Now, it's story time. So, I go to school, which is completely fine. I live in residence, which is completely fine. A lot of other people live in residence and go to school, which is completely fine. But a lot of people live in residence is um, because they want to be independent. They don't want to be living at home. They don't want their parents to tell them when to <clears throat> do their laundry. <clears throat> they don't... That's <laughs> actually a cough. They don't want their parents to tell them when to <clears throat> switch over their <clears throat> laundry. <clears throat> so that is where our story begins. On the afternoon of January 18th, 2016, I got up to the second floor of my residence building because my floor, first floor, a laundry room, uh, was closed due to maintenance, so I had to go to the second floor laundry room. Anyway, so uh, when we walk into the laundry room, there are three washers and three dryers. So when I get there, get this, alright, so there's one washer that's free and the other two washers are being used, which is totally fine and fair because it's a public laundry room. The uh, washing cycles for the laundry machine takes around 38 minutes or something like that, but that's not the point, alright? The point here is that one of the two washers had 10 minutes remaining and the other washer had 5 minutes remaining. So I thought to myself, alright, so I'll put uh, one load of laundry in the free washing machine and then I'll wait 5 or 10 minutes until one of them would come and switch over the laundry. One guy did, however, come and switch his laundry 25 minutes later. <laughs> but he also came with another load of laundry to put in the uh, washing machine. But by the time that he uh, came in 25 minutes later... Alright, hold on a sec. Now if everyone could just be silent while David takes aim. And he gets it with a headshot. Oh yeah. Anyway, back to our quest for laundry. So, uh, when that guy came... Uh, came back in 25 minutes later, my first load of laundry was 10 minutes to being done. So I thought once again, all right, I'll wait 10 minutes for my first load to be done so I can put in my second load. And hopefully in between that time, this other guy could come in and um, switch over his laundry because his laundry has been done for a good uh, um, half an hour so far. So I was waiting for another 28 minutes, hoping for that other guy to come and collect his laundry. So after that 28 minutes of just hoping that that, that guy would come, uh, and he didn't, uh, the guy who did come's laundry was done, so I could put in my third and final load. So when I did that, my second load of laundry was only 10 minutes away from being done, so I waited another 10 minutes. After that 10 minutes, uh, that load was done, I, I tossed that into the dryer, and then my third and final load had 20 minutes left. And no, I did not stay in that laundry room for that extra 20 minutes. I went back to my room and I laid down because I was mad and angry at the whole wide world, especially that guy who was a no-show. So I was in that laundry room for um, an hour and 23 minutes. That guy who didn't collect his laundry is a big... Dick. All right, well, that is the laundry story. I truly hope it met to everyone's expectations because it was the last story that was told, and it's, well, it's in the title. I really hope uh, this video does well. I hope you guys like it. I hope you guys can uh, like, subscribe, and comment on the questions that I uh, asked you guys, like who's your favorite director. And also, if this ever happened to you, something like this involving laundry or anything at all, that you had to wait a very long periods of time in the same place, let me know because those are fun, well, afterwards they're fun stories, not during, because during you just want to rip the whole world apart. Anyway, um, so I'll let you guys go with the rest of this video. There's not much left, so thank you very much for viewing. If you guys, again, could uh, like the video, if you could subscribe, if you could share this video, that would be fantastic, and comment. Uh, so thank you very much, guys. You guys have been lovely. Adios, amigos.